Vasanti Ras. We read some lectures of, uh, of Gurudev yeah. and that he spoke about the Ras Lila that's happened on these days when uh, Krishna pretends to go be falling asleep and then um, Shimatarana goes and finds him in a basket with food. It's like a nice night, a nice mm-hmm. pastime. And then from Balaram Ras Yatra, we read a four of uh, morning more, uh, walking with Saint in the morning walk when he's playing about Balaram and the um, Ras dance with all the gopis. Balaram yeah. dances with Krishna gopis. Yeah. And then from Basi Balaram and Goswami appearance, they were read from um, Bhakti Balasita Goswami Maharaj too. Is this his appearance today? Mm-hmm. His appearance day also. Oh, and you read from whose book? Bhakti Balaram Kirtan Maharaj. You know the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Mrs. Gosi? Yeah. Yeah, that one. For whose appearance? From Bhakti Balaram Goswami. Oh, Bhakti Balaram. Yeah. Bhakti Badan Ananda. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sri Shamananda, we do in half time too. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, well then I have to read something. So, Damodar are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, can you bring my computer, my laptop? It's, it's on the top shelf, okay. just behind my chair. Mm, yeah, you know, I didn't know. <laughs> well, on the calendar in India, it looks like it's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right here in Bad Yeah. I just didn't check. Caught by surprise. Mm-hmm. It's a good surprise though. <laughs> yeah. But it's also lamentable because I didn't hear the nectar. 
this morning. So what we're, what we're planning to do is um, finish what we couldn't quite finish yesterday. And um, it's um, like basically one page. And it talks about the verse, the famous verse from Shiva Raghunath Das Goswami. His all time ultimate mood verse. You know which one I'm talking about? Huh? No. Asha Barair Amrita Sindhu Mayai Katanjit. Kalo mayati gamita kila sampratam hi. Tom chait kripa mai vidasyasi. Naiva kim me. Pra nairv rajema chavaroru pakaranaki. It's at the end of Vilak Pushamanjali. Verse 102. So we'll get to that, but first, Sri Shamananda Prabhu. Can you just give us a translation? Okay. You'll recognize. It's actually not a direct translation. It's like Srila Sridhar Maharaj's. It's a, it's a whole page. We'll wait for that. Bande ham shri guru shri judaha padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavam shcha shri rupam sadrajatam sahagana ragnatan vitam tam sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakantam Shcha Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha. <coughs> Mukam Kuroti Vacha Lam Pangam Langayate Gidim Yat Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurun Dinatanam <coughs> Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita nam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. Namo mahabadanyaya krishna prema pradayate. Krishnaya krishna chaitanya namane gaura tvise namaha. <coughs> Nityanandam namastubhyam prema nanda pradayane. Kalo Kalmasha Nashaya Janava Patai Nama <coughs> Panchatadvat Matam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam He Krishna Karana Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanshana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari <coughs> Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आई एम ऑफरिंग माय दंडवत प्रणाम माय श्रद्धा पुष्पांजलि एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ माय मोस्ट वर्शिपेबल बिलवेड गुरुदेव नित्य लीला प्रविष्टा ओम विष्णु पाद परमहंस अष्टतर शत श्री शिला Eshi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Sri La Prabhupada And then I'm offering my same unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Sikh Shaguru Dev's <coughs> Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pat Paramahamsa Asto Tarasata Shri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Shri Dhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Asto Tarasata Shri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj I'm offering my dandavat pranams to the lotus feet of all my Shri Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and my dandavat pranams to all the vaishnavas and all the vaishnavis so shri shamananda prabhu <coughs> shri shamananda prabhu was a servant of a servant of subal in krishna leela servant of a servant of subal in krishna leela he was the disciple of hridayananda or also known as hriday chaitanya you know why he's hriday chaitanya why because uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu entered his heart <laughs> yes. yes that's a funny one uh, and so he was uh, a disciple of Hridaya Chaitanya who was a disciple of Gauri Das Pandit. Gauri Das was Subal in Krishna Lila. Oh, wow. Yes. So there's a verse here being quoted from Oh Shamananda Sat Shataka. Shamananda Shataka. Well Shataka means a hundred verses. So there must be such a, a poem that is written about him. Okay, here's the here's the verse. Yam loka buvi kirtayanti hridaya nandas yashishyam priyam sakye shri subalasya yam bhagavata preshtan shishyam tata. Sa Shri Man Rasikendra Mashtaka Manish Chitte Mama Ham Maha Harnisham Mama Harnisham Shri Radha Riyanarma Marmastu Ruchim Sampadayam Vashatam Shri Shamananda was known in this world as Hridayananda's dear disciple. He was the grand disciple of Subal Saka, the most dear friend of the Supreme Lord. He was the crest jewel of the enjoyers of sacred rapture, that means rasa. May he appear day and night in my mind, bringing an appreciation for the essence of the joys of the beloved of Sri Radha. So Shamananda Prabhu was born on the full moon day, which is today, of Chaitra in 1456 of the Shaka era, that's 1534 AD. <clears throat> in the town of Darenda Bahadurpur, which is near the Kara Kargapur railway station and Med Medinipur. His father was Sri Krishna Mandal and his mother Durika. Krishna Mandal's hometown was Dandeshwar, which lies on the banks of the Suvarna Reka River. 
The following statement is found in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Abhidhan. Quote, Sri Krishna Mandal used to live in a place called Ambuwa near Dandeshwar. <clears throat> he formerly lived in Gauda, the part of Bengal which lies on the banks of the Bhagirata River, and only later moved to Dandeshwar, which is just across the present-day border in Orissa. Shamananda's disciples have established five principal seats in the towns of Darenda, Bahadurapur, Rayani, Gopibalapur, and Shringapur. Shamananda Prabhu was born in the Sadagopa subcaste, Sadagopa subcaste, which fits in the category of Jala Chala, that is, Brahmins who are permitted to take water touched by its members. Interesting. Of course, a Vaishnava is beyond the material qualities. And he may take bath in a, he may take birth in a family of any race or caste. If anyone thinks badly of Vaishnavas or judges them on the basis of their race or caste, he is destined for hell. Then he quotes the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, which confirms this. Arche Shila uh, Dir Gurushur Naravati Vaishnave Jati Budhir. Vishnorva Vaishnava. Vishnorva Vaishnavanam Kalimala Matane Padatirtem Bubudhi Sri Vishnor Namni Mantre Sakala Sakala Kalusahe Sabda Samanya Budho Budhir Vishnu Sarveshvareshe Tad Itara Samadhir Yasyava Naraki Sa. At the end of this verse, I've heard it very many times, but I haven't fully memorized it. At the end of this verse, it says, Yasyava Naraki Sa. That he is residing in Narak, in hell, hellish condition. So, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, or sorry, it's from the Padma Purana. From the Padma Purana. <clears throat> and it's stating that anyone who considers the deity of the Lord to be nothing but stone, who considers the guru to be an ordinary human being, or who considers the Vaishnava to be a member of a particular caste or race, who takes the holy water which has washed Vishnu or the Vaishnava's feet and can destroy all the sins of the age of Kali to be ordinary water, who thinks that the name or the mantra of Vishnu, which destroys all evils, is the same as any other sound, or who takes Vishnu to be equal to any other than himself. He has a hellish nature. You recognize that verse? All these points. The one who takes birth in a low-class family is not disqualified from performing devotional service, nor is one who is born in a pure, high-class Brahminical family automatically qualified for such service. Whoever engages in the worship of the Lord is a great person. One who does not worship him is rejected. So this is from Antya Lila Chaitan Charitan into chapter 4. Uh, Name Bhaktas Chaturvedi Mad Bhakta Svapacha Priya Tasmai Deyam Tato Grahyam Sa Chapujyo Yatahyayam Simply being a knower of the four Vedas, Chaturvedi, it does not make someone my devotee. An outcast who is my devotee is dear to me. One should exchange gifts and food, etc., with such a devotee, for he is verily as worshipable as I. So, quotation from the Hari Bhakti Vilas. <clears throat> now, prior to Shamananda's birth, 
His parents had lost several children in childbirth, and they vowed to surrender their next child to Vishnu if it survived. Having suffered so much grief in the loss of their previous children, they first named Shamananda Duki, or unhappy. Why? To ward off further distress. So Shamananda's parents, Durika and Sri Krishna Mandal, made their home in Dandeshwar. His father was the best of the Sad Gopa caste of impeccable character. Krishna was everything to him, and Krishna's devotees very dear. We cannot describe the virtues of his parents for fear of increasing the volume of this book. They had previously lived in Darenda and Bahadurapur, and some people say that Shamananda's birth took place there. Nothing could stop his birth for he came after many other children had been stillborn to his parents. Because of their previous losses, his parents brought him up in sadness, and so they called him Duki. This is from the Bhakti Ratnakar, what I read. <coughs> Shamananda Prabhu's parents performed the appropriate rituals when the time came for the first eating of solid food and the cutting of hair, etc. As he grew older, he studied Sanskrit grammar, and so forth. His parents were overjoyed to see his talents and his religious proclivity. After having carefully listened to the glories of Goranga and Nityananda from devotees, he was able to repeat them to others. When listening to the activities of Gornitai, or those of Radha and Krishna, tears would flow in waves from his eyes. Gornitai, or those of Radha and Krishna, oh sorry, he also devotedly served his parents, <clears throat> and they told him to get initiated so that he could fully commit himself to the service of the Lord. Duki agreed, and he told them that he wished to take Diksha from Hridayi Chaitanya, the disciple of Nityananda and Goranga's associate, Gauri Das Pandit. So when going to Kalna for that purpose, he would also have the good fortune to see the Ganga and to bathe in it. So his parents happily gave him permission to go there. When Duki arrived in Ambika Kalna, you know what that place is? You know who stayed there for many years? Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj. There was a king of that area and there was a famous temple. I don't quite remember exactly the significance of that temple, but that's in the same village as Gauri Das Pandit's house where the deities of Gorni Thai are. But he stayed there just sleeping on the veranda and doing the puja for a number of years. Yeah. <clears throat> so when Duki arrived in Ambika Kalna, he threw himself at the feet of Hridoy Chaitanya, who, upon learning his identity, happily gave him Krishna Mantra and named him Krishna Das. From then on, Duki was known as Duki Krishna Das. Hridoy Chaitanya ordered him to go to Vrindavan to engage in bhajan. Though he did not like being separated from his Gurudev, Duki Krishna Das set off for Vraja, first visiting Navadvip and other places in Gauramandala, where he sought the blessings of the Vaishnavas. <clears throat> finally, after spending much time on pilgrimage, he finally arrived in Vrindavan, where he became completely absorbed in the worship of Radha and Shyamasunda. In Vrindavan, Duki Krishna Das studied the Vaishnava scriptures under Sri Jiva Goswami, who was the leading scholar of the Sampradaya. 
So when Hridaya Chaitanya heard of the enthusiasm with which Dukhi Krishnadas was leading the devotional life in Braja, he wrote a letter to Jiva Goswami in which he said that Dukhi should consider Jiva to be an extension of himself. Jiva gave titles to his three most prominent students, Srinivas, Naratam, and Dukhi Krishnadas, bestowing Shamananda on the latter. The reasoning behind this name was that he brought great joy to Radha and Shamasundar. While in Vrindavan, he was given the name Shamananda. This is a quote from Bhakti Ratnakara. While in Vrindavan, he was given the name Shamananda because he brought great joy to Shamasundar. And when Jiva saw his charming activities, he kept him nearby and he instructed him in the Vaishnava scriptures. But there's no mention here of the famous pastime. The ankle? The ankle. Ankle. Anklet. Yes. So you've all heard that pastime. Yeah. And according to the Radha Shamasundar temple, there's a deity on the altar, which is said to be the very deity that was given by Shimati Radhika to, Sham, to Shamananda. And that's where the tilak the mark from the anklet. So all following in that line have very thin tilak line and also goes down like a U shape. So <clears throat> Jiva Goswami sent Srinivas Acharya, Nartam Das Thakur and Shamananda back to Bengal with the Vaishnava scriptures in uh, 1504 of the Shaka era, which is 1582 to 83 AD. The idea was to spread the teachings found in these books throughout Bengal and Orissa. The events which took place when Bir Hambir had the books stolen in Vishnupur have been related in the chapter on Srinivas Acharya. So you know that pastime. Naratam went to northern Bengal and Shamananda went to Orissa. Uh, Midnapur district was previously under the rule of the Orissan king. Today there is a branch Gaudiamat in Midnapur city named the Shamananda Gaudiamat, which is meant to preserve his holy memory. Oh, here's the pastime. <clears throat> Radharani's special mercy on Shamananda. Even though Shamananda Prabhu was Hridaya Chaitanya's initiated disciple, his guru had entrusted him to the care of Sri Jiva Goswami Prabhu. Can you imagine? Your guru is Hridaya Chaitanya, and he's entrusting you to the care of Jiva Goswami. <laughs> this is inconceivable. Through the association of Jiva, and service to him, Shamananda developed a taste for serving Radha and Krishna in the conjugal mood. Hridaya Chaitanya Prabhu himself was a disciple of Gauri Das Pandit, who was one of the twelve Gopalas, namely Subal Saka. He worshipped Gornitai in the mood of friendship. So those who think that Shamananda committed an offense to his initiating spiritual master by abandoning his mood, his mood and trying to directly serve Krishna in a higher mood, they are wrong. The mood of friendship is contained within the conjugal mood. <clears throat> if a disciple makes further progress in spiritual life, it enhances the reputation of his teacher. An extraordinary incident which took place in Vrindavan prior to his being ordered by Jiva to return to Orissa, demonstrates how dear Shamananda was to Radharani. One day, Shamananda Prabhu was sweeping the Ras Mandal in Vrindavan, absorbed in ecstatic trance. Suddenly, by Radharani's transcendental mercy, he found her ankle bracelet lying on the ground. 
In his excitement, he touched the ankle bracelet to his forehead, where it left a mark, which is preserved to this day as the tilak marking of the disciple descendants of Shamananda. It is known as Nupura Tilak. Shamananda Prabhu's preaching. Nartam Thakur and Shamananda primarily preached the message of Mahaprabhu through Kirtan. <clears throat> Srinivas sang Kirtan in a style called Manohara Sahi, and Nartam sang in a Garana Hati, and Shamananda in Reneti. He would enchant the listeners with his heartfelt singing of Kirtan. These styles of Kirtan are no longer existent. As a result of his preaching in Orissa, Many Muslims also became Shamananda's disciples. The most important of his innumerable disciples was Rasika Murari. Rasikananda was the son of Achutananda, the zamindar of Rohini village. He had another name, Murari, and he was thus most commonly known as Rasika Murari. He was a very powerful preacher and his fame is still widespread throughout the villages of Orissa. <clears throat> a list of some of Shamananda's prominent disciples is given in the Bhakti Ratnakara. So, Rasikananda. I remember you read the book, Rasikananda. That's right. Yeah, and recently his appearance there was, we also read something. And in that book, it's also described. You know, in, in the Shamananda, Radha Sham Sundar Temple in Vindavan, there's also a very big painting. It's like, you know, seven feet tall, a painting of Rasikananda, who is depicted in a bluish color. And apparently it's said that he's also an incarnation of Ani Buddha or Dumna, one of those. He's an incarnation also. And we know the story of his elephant disciple. Did you hear? The elephant disciple. A, dis a, a, a elephant was sent to kill him by envious persons. But by mantra, he stopped the elephant. Uh, and then the elephant submitted to him paying its obeisances. And he gave initiation to the elephant and gave the elephant the name Gopal. Yes. And later on, whenever he would come to that area, because he was the, this elephant was the head of the whole tribe of elephants. Or what do you call them? Tribe? Elephant tribe? I guess so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, he would just call on the edge of the forest and Gopal would come, pay his obeisances. Pretty powerful preaching. <laughs> so here's a quote from the Bhakti Ratnakara, <clears throat> which is listing some of Shamananda, Shamananda's prominent disciples. Shamananda made disciples all over the place. A person can be purified by hearing their names. Here we go. Are you ready to become purified? Yes, please. Radhananda, Purushottam, Manohara, Chintamani, Balabhadra, Jagadishwara, Uddhava, Akrura, Madhuvan, Govinda, Jagannath, Gadadhar, Ananda Ananda, Radha Mohan. So Shamananda was constantly immersed in the joys of Kirtan, in the association of these disciples. <clears throat> Poets have described his wonderful pastimes for the pleasure of everyone. Shri Shri Guru Gauranga, Shri Shri Radha Govinda Ji, Ki Jai Jai Jagannath Dev Ki Jai 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 Gauranga Ki Jai Jai So other than these disciples, Shamananda converted a yogi who was named Damodar. Narahari Chakravarti has written the following account of that conversion. There was a practitioner of yoga named Damodar. Shamananda 
mercifully flooded him with devotional rasa. And after becoming Shamananda's disciple, Damodar cried and chanted the names of Nitai Chaitanya, who could remain untouched by his ecstatic absorption. He danced, crying out, Bhakti is the best of all. And after delivering Damodar, Shamananda continued to travel about, distributing the jewel of devotion to all. Can we imagine what that era was like mm -hmm. just after Mahaprabhu and his associates were had disappeared, huh? And this next wave has come. Such a powerful wave to this very day, all throughout Bengal Orissa that is going on hundreds of years later. Hmm? Yes. Now Shamananda he put on a large festival at Derenda with Rasika Murari and Damodar, which is still remembered today. When he left the world, Shamananda turned over the service of Govinda at Gopi Balapur. Shamananda's disciples and their descendants still worship his deity, Radha Shyam Sundar in Vrindavan. This temple is still one of the principal pilgrimage sites in Vrindavan. Shamananda Prabhu lived the last part of his life in Nishringapur in Orissa, where he continued preaching Vaishnavism. His earthly pastimes came to an end on the first day of the waning moon in the month of Ashar in 1630 AD. Shri Shamananda Prabhu ki jai Mancha Kapadrivascha Kripa Sindhu Paditanam Bhavani Vyavaishnavyamon Then you go into so many details about the incident at the anchorage. Not too much, yeah. I think probably because some of those incidences may not be accepted as like authentic or something because there's various pastimes connected. So he's just staying to the narrative of that. So now I told that we were going to complete this and there's three paragraphs to read here. And we, this was <clears throat> this is just before the section that I read on the first day, where it began with the topic of service to Radharani, service of Radharani. So now, um, yesterday we read how Ramanath Das Goswami had lived 18 years in the direct association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Jagannath Puri. And Surup Damodar Goswami and so many others, but they were his life and soul. And when they departed from this world, Raghunath Das Goswami had completely lost his composure. He could not tolerate their separation. Can you imagine being 18 years with Jaitanya Mahaprabhu himself and the incarnation of Lalita Devi, Surup Damodar, who became your Sikh Guru? Mm -hmm. uh, you heard everything from him, everything he got from him. So he just could not tolerate living any longer. He made a plan, I'm going to Vrindavan, I'm going to jump from Govardhan Hill and end my life. But when he arrived in Vrindavan and he met Rupa and Sanatan, he saw a vision, he saw a dream of a new life. And then he found that although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Swarup Damodar have disappeared from my physical eyes, they are living here in Rupa and Sanatan. Mahaprabhu and Swarup Damodar are living in Rupa and Sanatan and living in their activities in their preaching tendency. Mahaprabhu is here 
as living as anything. He had to reject the idea of finishing his life. And with new vigor, he began to serve in Vrindavan. And Das Goswami has given us the understanding of our highest aspiration. That's why he's called the what? Prayajan Tattva Acharya. And he says, O oh Radhika, I want your service. If you are not satisfied with me, I do not want Krishna nor his land Raja. This is his prayer. And he is admitted as the Prayojan Acharya, the guru who has shown us what is the highest aim of our life. Prayojan Tattva, the ultimate destination. And this shloka proves his position as the giver of our destination. Here's that shloka. Vilapa Kushumanjali at the end, 102. Asha Varai Ramrita Sindhu Mayai Katanjit Kalo Mayati Gamita Kila Sampratam Hi Twam Chait Kripa Mai Vidasya Sinaiva Kim Me Pranair Brajema Chavaroru Bakaranapi this shloka is a direct prayer to Radharani. It expresses a particular type of hope, asha. The verse begins with asha varayar amrita sindhu. So it expresses a particular type of hope which is so sweet and reassuring that it is compared with an unlimited ocean of nectar. He says, With that hope, I am somehow passing my days, flagging my days, dragging my life through these tedious times only for that hope. That hope is sustaining me. The nectarine ocean of hope is attracting me and sustaining me. Somehow I am dragging my days to my only safety. Otherwise, I have lost the direct association of Mahaprabhu, Sarup Damodar, so many other great souls, and still I am living. Why? I have a particular ray of hope and the prospect and the quality of my hope is very great and high but my patience has reached its end I can't endure it any longer I can't wait I am finished I can't wait anymore at this moment if you do not show your grace to me, I am finished. I shall lose the chance forever. I shall have no desire to continue my life. It will all be useless. Without your grace, I can't stand to live another moment. And Brindavan, which is even dearer to me than my life itself, I am disgusted with it. It is painful. It is always pinching me. What to speak of anything else? And what to speak of anything else? I am even disgusted with Krishna. It is shameful to utter such words. But I can have no love even for Krishna until and unless you take me up within your confidential camp of service. Such a charm I have come for. I have seen the clue of such a charm within the service of your camp. And without that, everything is tasteless to me. 
and I can't maintain my existence even in Vrindavan. And even Krishna, what to speak of others, has no charm for me. This is the prayer of Raghunath Das Goswami. So, Radha Dasyam, the servitorship of Srimati Radharani, is said to be the highest attainment of the living being by the school established by Mahaprabhu. It is the gist of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It is Krishna's own version. So, that brings us to where we started on that first day. But this, uh, you know, we discussed after that so much about Sri Radha and so forth. But Srila Srila Maharaj, he has cited this verse. When I read this the first time, like I've mentioned, it's the first time that I began to understand what is Radha Dasyam and how the topmost associate of Mahaprabhu, Raghunath Das Goswami, he is the acharya of this. We did not hear this prior. No. So that is what opens up the whole realm of all the literatures of the Goswamis, this mood. Without this, we cannot understand the, the books of the six Goswamis. It is completely for this. Every single one of their books is ultimately for this. And Radha Dasyam, uh, our Gurudev was absorbed in this day and night, day and night, day and night. Where is that verse found in the Vilapa? Yeah, this is the Vilapa Kusumanjali. Verse 102? No, yeah, verse 102. It's right at the end. I think there's 104 verses. But the entire Vilapa Kusumanjali is the ultimate gem, which is Raghunath Das Goswami himself is describing throughout the whole prayer that he has composed, how he is meditating and envisioning himself doing each and every different ser service for Srimati Radhika, for her lotus feet. And so Srila Gurudev was requested by the ISKCON leaders to go through that book. I don't know, I've not heard the lectures, but he's he did some readings with them to try to clue them in on what is the mood of Vilap Kushamanjali. From whom did they get that understanding that this is the uh, uh, highest and final world gem that Raghunath Das? Probably from Gurudev. Probably from Gurudev. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, and then, and then they, they asked him. Even more mm -hmm. We have yet to have that Gurudev's version printed in printed form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm saying the book, it hasn't been produced yet in all these years. I don't know why exactly. I heard that Shamrani Didi was planning to complete that. So that completes our reading of Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj on the, uh, the process uh, how we can aim in this line of Sri Rupa. The line of Sri Rupa is the title of this chapter, and he ends with that. Sri Guru and His Grace, the only way it can be attained. So how fortunate we are that our Guru Dev, the most extraordinary Vaishnav personality, came into this world, became the very intimate associate of our Srila Prabhupada, and then requested by Srila Prabhupada, came to the West and traveled 15 years, the entire length and breadth of the planet, giving these high things to the jivas. Very carefully, according to the audience and so forth. But ultimately, we know, because what books did Gurudev actually give? He gave these books, in which 
we can follow them and aspire to aspire one day uh, for these very high things. But this is a very reassuring lecture by Srila Sridhar Maharaj because he's telling us each and every step of the way. Uh, so we're all very, very fortunate that we've come in this line of the six Goswamis and especially Rupa and the Raghunath. Yes, that's why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his final words while he was still on this planet is all about preaching the line of Rupa and the Raghunath. He repeated that a number of times. Gaur Prima Nandi Jai Shiva Raghunath Das Goswami Padati Jai Jai Shri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Shiva Sopada Ki 